for me standing for the reading of his word. Open your Bible to 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 45 to 47. Again, it's 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 45 to 47. We will be reading the verses responsibly and on the last verse all together. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword and spear and javelin. But I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. All together. This is the word of God. You may now all be seated. Almusal na alang mararanasan. 
At ito may kita natin habang patungo sila doon ay maaaring ilan ay abala sa pag-adjust ng kanilang mga slaves, mga spheres, and other war equipments. Patungo dito sa bundok ng at abali of Elo na ito. So yan po may kita natin. So dito sa laraw ng ito ay may kita natin ang kabilang bundok ay may kita natin ang kampo ng mga Philistine at sa kabila naman ay ang kampo ng Haring Saul, mga Israelita. At dito ngayon, ilang milya ang layo para patungo dito sa kaliwa, dito may kita ang Jerusalem. So dito may kita natin habang handa na ang lahat, nagkaroon ng kumpletong katahimigan. There was an eerie silence. Nasaan na kaya itong mga Philistines? E nang sila ang pasimuno ng lahat ng gulong ito. At maya maya pa, nakarinig sila ng isang tunog na tila baga isang tangke. Na dumadabundong na parang isang tangke. Sa 1 Samuel 17 verse 4, a champion named Goliath from Gath came out from the Philistine camp. Yes, he is 9 foot 6. A human tank. So may kita natin na talagang maihintakutan ang lahat ang mahahakit sa kanya. Yes, he's a man with a message. Kaya sabi rito, choose a man and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. This day I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. Itong lagi sinisigaw ni Goliath. Whenever he shouts and challenges the Israelites, anong ginagawa ng Israelita? Patakbo na umatras. Ang nakakalungkot, kasama si Haring Saul dito sa mga umatras. Kaya dito may kita natin that giants threatens those of us who look at life from the ground level. So ito ang dahilan. Kapag ang isang tao ay ang tingin niya ay on a ground level lamang, natural, mahintakutan siya. He will be threatened. Kaya ito ang problema ni Hari Saul. The God, God's first elect. And now, he's on his own. He wanted it that way, so God left him. Yan ang gusto niya, kahit iniwan siya ng Diyos. So dahil sa iniwan na siya ng Diyos, may kita natin na may kaakibat ng mga kaguluhan ang nangyari pagkatapos nito. So when someone has tasted, tasted God's opportunities and turns away, God lifts the energy shield and the others another side, send a discomfort. Ito may kita natin doon sa chapter 16 ng 1 Samuel verse 14. Now the spirit of the Lord departed from Saul and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. So may kaakibat ng mga discomfort once you turn away from the Lord. Ganon din ang nangyari sa ating mga kapatid. Matapos mong maranasan ng papapala ng Diyos, mga great opportunities na dumating sa iyong buhay, and still, you turn away from Him. Dito mong maranasan na like soul, naranasan niya yung mga discomfort right after He turned away from the Lord. So, ganyan ang buhay man ng palataya. Kaya, mahirap na tayo na matapos natin maranasan ng kanyang biyaya, kanyang pagpala, tayo ay tatalikod, tayo ay malalamin. So since Saul is now on his own, he is now looking at the life from ground level. So ibig sabihin pala, when you say giant threatens those of us who look at life from the ground level, ibig sabihin, 
You are walking at your own. Yun pong ibig sabihin nun. Ikaw na ang nagkahari sa iyong buhay at hindi mo na kailangan ng Diyos. Yan po ang ibig sabihin ng uh, living life on a ground level. You are on your own. Hindi mo na kailangan ng Diyos sa lahat ng, even sa iyong mga plano, sa lahat. So, dito ba yung natin that those living with ground level perspective are overwhelmed by giants. So, itong nagiging resulta. No? Kapag kayo ka lumalakad on a ground level, you will be overwhelmed. Overwhelmed ng ano? Katulad ng mga Israelita ni Haring Saul, they were overwhelmed when the Goliaths, when the giants, came along their way. So, tayo din naman, when we are living a life on a ground level perspective, mararanasan din natin na yung mga higante on our valleys. So giants are terribly hard to handle on your own. Mahirap na naman, mahirap tigit, wala na sa'yo ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos. At yan ang naranasan ng mga Israelita. At dapat din lang ma-realize even before sa kalamang ni Nuno, before the Israelites came into the Promised Land, Natenga sila, ano ba natal sa natenga, nabimbim sila, natigil sila sa isang lugar. Dahil nabalitaan nila through their spies na meron mga higanting tao doon sa susungin nilang lugar na pangako ng Diyos para sa kanila. So nahintamutan sila. So the report of Goliath's imposing ancestors stuck all the generations of the Israelites during those times. Pero nung nakuna yung crew, sa kalabang plano, sa leadership ni Joshua D. Caleb, they invited the giant nations. At sila yung nagtagumpay. But at 80 years old, hindi rin niya kayang harapin pa ang sino mang darating na gulayan sa kalabang buhay. So ito na rin problema, problema. So gulayan is a leftover may natira. Ano? So, a big leftover and it only takes only one giant to unglue us. O yan higit tayo. Mahintapotan tayo. Because of that one giant leftover. Nasikulayan. Why? Because from the ground level, giants fill up our screen. So, the closer we get, the bigger they look. Yan ang nagiging sitwasyon natin kapag ka naharap tayo sa mga giants in our lives. What are the giants in our lives? Yung mga gigantic problems na mga hinahayaan ng Diyos na dumaan sa ating mga buhay. At palagay po lahat tayo dumadaan sa kanyang mga sitwasyon. We have all valleys o mga unusual na mga giants in our Values. See, the giants roam pagalagalayan in all generations. There's at 1000 BC, <coughs> sa atin at 2015 AD, ay meron pa rin mga gulayad na umahad lang sa atin in our own values. Yes. Lahat tayo, I bet na dumaan sa mga nitong sitwasyon. We have all gulayas in our valleys. A valley you must cross in coming to God. So hindi po madali ang patungo sa ating Panginoon. At madadaanan natin yan, masusuman natin yan. The, part, the problem and the issue is, what are we going to do? about our giants. Anong gagawin natin? Whenever this type giants comes along our way. So those living with ground level perspective refuse to face giants. Una, makita natin, they threaten us, they overwhelm us. Secondly, we refuse to face 
those giants in our lives. So Goliath is down there day after day, and there's no getting around him. Without God facing giants, it's impossible. Sagana atin hindi natin kaya suungin. Hindi natin kaya masutin ang lahat ng ito without God. At katulad itong nangyari kay Haring Saul, hindi niya kaya harapin si Goliath. Kaya ang mga Israelita, kasama siya na hari ng Israel, kasama siya kung mahari pa sa takbo when Goliath challenged the Israelites. Mabilis pa siya sa kanyang mga tauhan na tumatakbo pa atras. Why? Because he's looking on a ground level. He's walking on his own. And that's what he wants. Kaya nakamta niya ito. So, but God, however, is still with Israel. Hindi iniwan. At ito lumipat kay batang si David. Noon ay bata pa siya. Hindi pa siya hari noon. He was anointed. Kung titignan niyo yung chapter 16, the supporting yun, he was anointed. Pero hindi pa panahon para siya ay maghari. Dito may kita natin sa 1 Samuel 16, 17, and 19. So Saul said to his attendants, Find someone who plays well and bring him to me. One of the servants answered, I have seen a son of Jesse of Bethlehem who knows how to play the lion. He's brave man and a warrior. He speaks well in his fine looking man, and the Lord is with him. Then Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, Send me your son David who is with the ship. So sa kanilang tahanan, si David ay parang baliwala lang. They ignored him. Kumbaga wala siyang buwang. Kasi mga puhay niya, lalo tigit yung tatlong puhay niya kasama doon sa Saul's army. army. Sarahin po siya doon. Yung kapatid niya pangayon na si Elia. Ang pangalawa ay si Abinadab at ang pangatlo ay si Shama. Nandun lahat yun sa kampo ni Haring Saul. So though he was ignored by his family, may kita naman natin dito na ginagamit siya. Nalaman ng hari o nai-report sa hari na siya ay marunong tumugtog, although siya ay nakapag-alaga lang ng tupa, so kinuha siya upang aliwin si Haring Saul. Because at this moment, when God removed the shield of power from Saul, yung discomforter na pinadala ng Diyos sa kanya, he was being tormented. Naguguluhan siya, nagugulumihanan siya. Kaya dito kinakailangan tawagin ang isang mausin na tumugto na si David upang siya ay aliwili. So dito, hindi lamang siya tagapastol ng tupa, hindi lamang siya taga-alim ni Haring Saul, kundi ginamit siya ni Haring Saul na tagabit-bit ng kanyang armor. So ginagampanan niya ang lahat ng ito devotedly. So minsan, tamang-tama nung siya ay pabalik na doon sa Valley of Ella, the big valley of Ella, ay tamang-tama naman na walang tigil na nag-ahamon at sumisigaw si Gulaya. Nagpita siya doon para magdala ng pagkain sa otos ng kanyang amang si Jesse. Sa verse 1 Samuel 17, 17 to 18, ito yung sinasabi, Now Jesse said to his son David, Take this ephah of roasted grain, and these ten loaves of bread for your brothers and marry to their camp. Take along these ten cheeses to the commander of their unit. See how your brothers are and bring back some assurance from them. So sabi ng kanyang anong si Jesse, pumunta ka doon at dali mo itong ilang pirasang tinapay sa inyong mga kapatid. At tingnan mo rin kung kumusta na yung mga kapatid mo doon. So dito may kita natin that even ang kanyang tatay, Nagdududa pa rin baka hindi makarating ang tinapay sa kanyang mga kapatid. So dahil sa musmus pa lamang siya. So he doesn't get respect even at home. Pero dito may kita natin na 
Paano kay Haring David ay isang malaking chance sa para sa kanya na magdala ng tinapay upang maobserbahin niya kung ano ba nangyayari doon sa bundok ng bag, uh, sa Valley of Ella at makatingin doon sa mga mighty warriors of King Saul as well as the Philistine side. Okay? So, dito may ikita natin, David arrives at the big valley just as the army is moving into attack position and prepared to shout, Rua, the war cry. So, nakaline up sila ganyan. So, araw-araw sa loob ng apat na pong araw, ganun ang ginagawa ng uh, Israelita, nakaline up sila ganyan. But whenever Goliath came up from the Philistine camp at maghahamon si Sigal sa may takuan ng mga Israelita. Kasama siya siya rin sa ulo. So sa loob ng apat na pong araw, ganun ang nagaganap at nangyayari. Nakakalimutan ng mga Israelita na madalas na sabihin sa kanila, sabi, do not be afraid for I am with you. Maraming beses na sinabi yan sa kanilang mga sinuon ng hari. At yun pa nga ko ng Diyos para sa kanila. Subalit, whenever Gulayat shows, they scatter, they run away. So the problem is, they fail to deal with the real problem of confronting the child in their valley. So tayo, paano tayo mag-resolve ng ating mga Gulayat sa ating mga buhay? mga gigantic problems. So, paano natin ito sinare-resolve na? How do we confront the gigantic problems in our valleys? How do we look at life from the ground level that causes us to ignore giants? Remember, God equipped us to defeat the giants in our lives. And for your information, God allows it para sa bawat sa atin na magkaroon ng ulayat along our way. Katulad ng ginawa niya kay Haring Saul. God allows it. Why? Because God wants us to force God's us, God wants to force us to come to Him and trust Him with those ulayats in our lives. Ang gusto niya magtiwala tayo sa Kanya. Sa halip na mahintapatan tayo, ma-overwhelm tayo, and refuse all these giants in our lives, siya ang bibigay sa atin ng kalakasan at ng kapangyarihan. Maaaring tuwing uh, gabi, pagkatahimik na yung kapilang kampo ng Philistine, for sure, marami sa mga Israelita na nanalangin. Maaaring ganito yung isang panalangin nila, Lord, remove this Goliaths in our life. Tayo, ang kaya panalangin natin. Do we ask also, Lord, remove these Goliaths in our lives? No, hindi po alas, hindi po haya ng Diyos sa mga magaganon. Rather, our prayer must be, God, give us the strength to overcome these Goliaths in our lives. Hindi po ba mas mainam yun? Because yun ang gusto ng Diyos sa atin. Yung magtiwala tayo sa Kanya, umasa tayo sa Kanya, na sa Kanyang kapangyarihan, sa Kanyang kalakasan sa atin, ay ma ma malalampasan natin lahat yung mga gulayas na yan sa ating mga buhay. And for sure, a big amen must be heard on the Israelites' come. Pero wala pa rin, for 40 days, Ganun ang ganun ang nangyayari. And on the 41st day, meron kay ibang nangyayari. Sa 1 Samuel 17, 23 to 25, As he was walking and talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance. And David heard, Whenever the Israelites saw the man, they all fled from him in great fear. Now the Israelites have been saying, Do you see 
how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will extend his family from taxes in Israel. So, no more than it all, or Marie Marie from the big, Paran is some bumbilla, the big land of Liwana. So, did you make it an attempt? Parakay David, isang malaking matanungan, why ko retreat? Hindi po yung BBR. <laughs> Bakit ka pupunta doon sabi, hindi po na yung BBR yung mga ibig sabihin. Bakit ko maatras? O bakit kayo maatras? Mahari itong sigaw ni David. Bakit kayo nagsisitakbuhan pa atras? So, but then David has never bothered by this gigantic obstacles at tinitiyak natin o tinitiyak ko ngayon na interesado siya doon sa offer ng hari ng Saul sa sino mang taong makakalabo ni Gula at magtagumpay yun ang ibibigay sa kanya Great wealth is the, the, the king's daughter in marriage and tax free para tayo na OFW mga tax free Si Juan ba ng tax dito? Ang pangaka ko meron pa rin, very devoted kayo sa ating bansa. Sinabihan na nga tayo na tax free tayo, magbabayad ka pa rin, okay lang yun. Para sa ating bansa, hindi sa mga politiko natin. Okay, giants ignite those of us who look at life with a God levels pers perspective. So, kung nung una, negatibo ang dating, dahil sa mga giants na ito, it threatens us. You might be overwhelmed because the giants filled up your spring and you will be, and you will refuse to face those giants. Pero ngayon, parang kay Hari at kay David, parang siga, apoy, nag-ignite. Wow, maganda yun. Nung marinig niya kay Hari ng Saul, pinaulit pa nga niya eh. Ano ba sabi ng Hari kung matalo ang gulayat na, sino makatalo kay gulayat na ito? Pinaulit pa niya uli yun. Sa verse 26 ng chapter 17, sabi niya, David asked the man standing near him, what will be done for the man who kills the Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Christian that he should defy the armies of the living God? So for David, giant looks like great opportunities to those with a God level perspective. Para sa kanya isang malaking opportunity ito. Asa, isipin ninyo, doon sa kanilang tahanan dahil sa siya ay musmus pa lamang o malit pa lamang. Siya yung laging nagpapastor ng tupa, tagal na lang tinapay sa kanyang mga kapatid. So, he doesn't get respect. Kaya nung marinig niya ito, so isang malaking opportunity ito para naman makilala nila sino ba itong si David. So, David has a different way of looking things. Kakaiba yung kanyang paningin. Why? Because ang kanyang pananaw ay nasa God's level. Hindi doon sa ground level. Ibig sabihin, God's level perspective, meaning, ang inaasahan mo lamang sa iyong buhay, walang iba kundi ang Diyos. Amen? Yung ganun na ginagawa ni Haring David. Ani David, hindi pa siya ako inun. He was anointed but still not in the palace. It's not yet the time. Kaya dito may kita natin, Israel and Saul are ground level lookers. But David is a man who looks at life from God's level. So, kita niyo yung kaibahan? Hindi umasa sa Diyos. He wants on his own. And here is David, a simple shepherd boy, umasa sa Diyos. Nagtitiwala sa Diyos. So, he's, he looks at God's level perspective. 
So kung magkaganon, si Haring David, his mental screen is filled by the Lord. Unlike Saul, or the yung mga yung si Saul, dahil nakikita niya yung kalakihan ni Bulaya, ang kanyang screen is filled by these giants. But David, because he's looking at God's level perspective, his screen is filled by the Lord. Ito po ang malaking kaibahan. So, which makes every problem small in comparison. Yun nga naman, kung yung screen mo ay pinupuno ng Diyos yan. So, ano ang mga gigantic problems that comes along your way, eh, napakaliit. Kung ikukumpara mo sa kapangyarihan ng iyong Diyos. Amen. Amen? So those of us who look, who sees life from God's level, like David, are ignited into the action by the giants that block the path of God. Giants were everywhere, and we are all faced with a series of opportunities, brilliantly disguised as impossible problems. Giant problems are open doors to those living with a God-level perspective. Okay? They are open doors. Yung una, they are great opportunities. Ito, open doors on how he can serve his master, on how he can serve, serve his God. So yun po ang mainam. Kaya what was an impossible problem to solve what is a, was a great opportunity for David to trust the Lord. Kaya dito may kita natin sa verse 28 and 29 When Eliab, David's oldest brother, heard him speaking with a man, he burned with anger at him and asked, Why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the desert? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to us this battle. Now, what have I done, sabi ni David? Can I even speak? So, itong sinasabi ni Haring David, parang, parang ang sabi ng kanyang kuya, na pangalan na si Elia, shut up David, wala ka pang magagawa. Tumigil ka. Tara po sa nila, chug. Skip. Mas matindi daw yung chug eh. Sabi mo lang yung skip, pero... Wag chug, kasi mas mas malalim, mas ma-hurt daw sila sa salitang chug. Parang shut up. Okay? Yan ang ibig sabihin na. Okay. Uh, pwede ba natin basahin natin ito? Sa verse 31 and 37. Okay, ready? What David said was over, overheard and reported to Saul. And Saul sent for him. David said to Saul, let no one lose heart on account of this Philistine. Your servant will go and fight him. Saul replied, You are not able to go out against this Philistine and fight him. You are only a young man and has been a warrior from his youth. But David said to Saul, Your servant has been keeping his father's sheep. When a lion or a bear came and carried off a sheep from the flock, I went after it, struck it, and rescued the sheep from his mouth. When it turned on me, I seized it by its tail, struck it, and killed it. Your servants has killed both the lion and the bear. This uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. Saul said to David, Go, and the Lord be with you. So, walang magawa si Haring Saul. Because, alam niya, walang isa man sa kanyang matitipunong army ang pwedeng humarap kay Pilaya. Kaya wala siyang choice. Nung sinabi ng batang si David, ang mga katagang ito, ang sabi niya, Go, and the Lord be with you. So, para kay David, Bulaya will be like the lions and the bear who bothered the flock of God, actually attacking God. Para sa kanya, when our lives are lived for God's glory and great plan, 
those attacking us, those in our path, are actually attacking God. They are blocking God's plan. Yun po ang nangyayari. Ang sino mang umahad lang sa kalooban ng Diyos o sa, sa kalooban, yung ginagawa niya, para bagang ang Diyos ang kinakalabay niya. So, dito may kita natin na giants in, a, in, in, in our valleys. Yung inyong giants in your valleys, my giants in my valleys, are exactly on God's right of way. Yun ang nalis ng Diyos sa bawat sa atin. Yung ibibigyan natin sa Kanya. Yung lahat ng giants in our valleys ibibigyan natin sa Kanya. Hindi ito hadlang, hindi ito sagabal sa Kanyang daraanan. Because those are in God's right of way. At yun ang gustong gusto ng Diyos sa bawat sa atin. So David is at sling shot level. Sabi sa verse 40, Then he took his staff in his hand, whose, uh, two spikes smooth stones from the, the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with this sling in his hand, approached the Philistine. Ang tanong, bakit limang bato ang kanyang pinulog doon sa ilog? Hindi pa siya sigurado doon sa isang bato? At meron siyang reservang apat? Kung kayo, si David, ilang bato ang pukunin ninyo? Baka dalawang po. Diba? <laughs> isang sapo. Dito isang sapo na. <laughs> Kaya limang bato ang kinuha ni Haring David. Ay, hindi pa siya Haring. Ba't malaging Haring David? Kaya kumuha ng limang bato si David dahil meron pang apat na gigantic yung kapatid ni Esik itong si Gulayan. Meron pang mga higanti kapatid na apat. At kung sasakuluhan lang ang lang, lang, lang kapatid, ay meron pang apat na bato na nakahanda para sa kanila. <laughs> Amen? So, hindi isang sako. Hindi talawang pong bato. Isa lang, sapat na. No? Isa lang, sapat na. Abasahin natin sama-sama yung ating text ulit. Sa 1 Samuel 17, 45 to 47. Okay, begin. David said to the Philistine, You come against me with sword, and spear and javelin. But I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. This day the Lord will have you hand you over to me, and I'll strike you down and cut off your head. Today I will give the purposes of the Philistine army to the birds of the air and the beasts of the earth, and the whole world will know that there is the Goliath in Israel, there is God in Israel. All those gathered here will know that it's not by sword or spear that the, Lord, that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's, and He will give all of you into our... See? The battle is the Lord's. Hindi natin laban. Ang kailangan lamang natin ay magtiwala at ipagkatiwala sa Kanya ang lahat. Can I hear the video clips, please? Let's watch the short clip. Slaves of a nameless God, once again I bring you the challenge of Goliath of God.
David triumphed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone. Without a sword and a spear in his hand, he struck down the Philistines and killed him. David ran and stood over him, and David said, sits exhausted and exhilarated. What are they? What are they? He had arrived that morning, a nameless errand boy, delivering food. Now, as the sun is setting up, he is the champion of Israel. It happens that way with those who see life from God's level. Kung ang paningin natin sa buhay, mga kapatid, ay katulad ni Hanin Saul, who looks like a, from the ground level, ay wala pong mangyayari. Because the, clo the closer we get, the, the bigger they look. Ito po ang ating conclusion na From ground level, giants feel like our screen. And from the ground level, giant problems in our values become small when we see it from a God level perspective. So, ganun kali. Kung ito ay sa paningin ng Diyos, tayo mahawa. Giants in our lives are always God's open doors. Great opportunities to put your faith and trust in Him. Mga kapatid, saan tayo, saan nakatutok ang ating mga paningin? Is it from the ground level or in God's level? Tayo po yung mga langit. Lord, marahin kong salamat. Sa nito yung mixahe po ito, Diyos ay nakita po namin na ang sino mang tumitingin sa buhay on a ground level perspective ay wala pong mangyayari. And we end up failure of that. Katulad niya ngayon sa ulo. So, balit ang pinakita ni Haring David na kung saan ay pinangangawa kanyang pangako ng Diyos, tumitingin siya kung paano ang paningin ng Diyos. Ano rin ang patagumpayan? Ang mga gigantic problems, katulad ni Gulayat ng Murab sa musmus na si David, ay kaya din mangyari po ito sa amin o kaya. We thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Praise God.